Here I've put the shutter into an old camera front, which is a handy jig for holding this while I'm dismantling it and while I'll be reassembling it afterwards. So I'll carry on with the disassembly. Uh, swing that round out of the way and I can take out the retard gear train. And the self timer. Right, all this stuff can come off. That's the latch that holds the main cam cocked. It also has the flash sink gear underneath here. And that was just a spring trying to get away. It's been foiled today. Take that cover off. There's our moving flash contact. Release that. Unhook that lever, recover that from where it tried to get to. Remove, this is our shutter release here, I'll just remove that. And I want a pair of pliers, I want to remove this spring. So I've got to stretch it out so I can unhook it. So I'll put a screwdriver behind that. Um, so it doesn't move. Get onto this spring, grab it, just stretch it out enough to unhook it, and that's the job done. If you don't put something behind there to stop that arm moving, as you stretch the spring out, the arm will just move with it, and you'll end up stretching the spring further and further until uh, the spring gets very stretched. This should just lift off. I'm not sure why it's not going to. There we go. Here's our pallet wheel. Yeah, and some tricky stuff. This the screw that holds this has got a post in the middle, so it's split. You could get it that with a pair of sharp tweezers, perhaps. But I've got a screwdriver made to do that job. In fact, I've got a couple of them. It's a simple screwdriver. With a slot cut up the middle of the blade to clear that post. There's a spring on that post of course. Here's our B lever, we'll unhook that. There's a spring here, the return spring for the B lever. That's on that post, it fits on it in a groove around that post. You don't want to lose it. This spring is worse. I'll zoom you in a bit. This is very keen to get away. I always hold a toothpick or something over the centre so it can't get away. Pick up the end and hook it. Here I've released the tension from it now, so it's been defused, I can lift it away and put that somewhere very carefully. What's more got to come out of here, oh, we might as well take this uh, bracket off. That's the bracket that holds the main spring in position. And we can take the main cam out of the shutter. And that's it from the front of the shutter. At the rear of the shutter. Three screws hold this plate in place. that plate away. This is our control lever for the flash sync speed 
and the self timer. That hooks into the case, it's uh, a bit awkward. At the rear of the case we have three screws that run through the case and hold the mechanism plate into the shutter. In this case they're exactly the same as those three screws that held that plate on the back of the shutter. Okay, so we can separate the case and the mechanism plate. If I give this a little nudge it'll probably come loose. No it won't. Let's give that a push. Okay. There's our mechanism plate with the shutter blades on it. And here's our shutter case. In this case there's virtually nothing in the shutter case because it doesn't have any diaphragm mechanism in there. The diaphragm in these cameras of course is part of the lens. So I'll just check that these three screws are snug. They are. If there was any obvious contamination of oil in here I would take that plate off to make sure I clean behind it. But there is none so there's no point doing that. The case will need to be cleaned carefully. Let's have a look at the uh, mechanism plate. We've got six blades. One's a cover blade. Let's lift these off. That was our sixth blade, it's a cover blade, it's quite narrow. Fifth, fourth, third, second blade has a steep cutout at the back edge. That's so it clears the shaft coming through here. And our first blade. Same position as the sixth blade, except it's this blade that's identical to the third, fourth, and fifth blade. Right, so that's all clear. There are two screws left here holding the lens tube to the blade act to the mechanism plate. We'll get these out. Very tight. piece is called the lens tube. Here's our blade actuating ring. And here's the mechanism plate stripped. Nothing else comes off here. The spring here, the detent spring for the blade actuating ring, normally you just leave that loose on there. All this needs to be cleaned with naphtha using cotton buds. Nothing tricky. So these three pieces to be cleaned, put back together, case to be cleaned in the same fashion, the shutter blades to be inspected but probably cleaned in exactly the same way because they don't look particularly marked, and then some reassembly. Right, our parts are all clean and ready to go. I'll start reassembling my mechanism plate. Just get the blade actuating ring in position and get its detent spring hooked in place. Here's the lens tube, get that seated. It's got the pallet trapped under it there, I'll just swing that to one side, that's better. And there are two screws that hold that in position. In fact there are three screws pretty much the same. One of them is slightly longer and that's because it has to pass through this bracket. If you mix these screws up you're going to end up in grief. Make sure that this longer screw stays with the bracket. 
the shorter screws go in here and here I'll just run those in if you put a long screw where a short screw should have been it'll stick out the other side, it'll foul the shutter blades, the shutter won't work. If you put a short screw where a long screw should have been, it won't extend far enough into the mechanism plate. It'll only engage a couple of threads and inevitably you'll end up stripping the thread out when you go to tighten it up. So I'm just checking, making sure nothing's sticking through here and here, that's all good. So there's my mechanism plate, the basic part of it at least, all organised and ready to go. Now this I want to lubricate, I'm going to lubricate my blade actuating ring with graphite powder. There are alternative methods you could use but graphite powder is very convenient. I've just got some loose graphite powder in this container and it's here because this is where I usually do this job. Now I'm just dropping some graphite powder in on top of the blade actuating ring. And then I'll work the blade actuating ring a number of times to settle that graphite powder in between the uh, blade actuating ring, the lens tube and the mechanism plate. Tap it to get rid of the excess and go and blow the excess off with a blower. Right, just check, put this into the blade open position and start stacking my shutter blades. There are six blades, four of the blades are identical, one of the identical blades goes there in the first position. The second blade has a steep cutout in the back of the blade to clear that hole. The third blade is identical to the first blade. The fourth blade is identical to the first and third. The fifth identical again. And the sixth is a narrow cover blade and the cover blade goes directly on top of where the first blade would have sat. I'm going to close this up very slightly to make it easier to fit the case over the top. And get my case in position. This post coming up has to go through this little square hole at the back. So that appeared to go well. Let's see if they open and close. That's good. I can put the case screws in place. There are three countersunk screws I'm not sure that's seated all the way loosen my screws up and give this thing a little nudge. Wasn't seated over that post all the way. Okay, that's good. So that's the first part of the job. Now, yeah. and start reassembling some of the components onto the mechanism plate on this side. 
Where's my little jig? This is the jig I'm using to assemble it on. It's just a, a gutted front panel from a, another camera. Very convenient. Holds everything nice and stable. Saves me crushing the flash thing connection or anything like that at the same time. Okay, so some springs. There are two springs need to go in here first of all. I'll zoom you in a bit. Okay, spring number one. I can pick the thing up. Goes on here. Now I hold a toothpick over the center so the spring can't get away. I've got to pick up this end of the spring, lift it over the obstructions, and drop it behind that pin there. That spring's trying to get off the post. Let me see. No, it's un unhooked. Start again. This is awkward. You need a good pair of tweezers to do this. These ones are a little bit worn out. Here we go. So now this lever and this lever are sprung loaded. The other next spring's not quite so much of a fight. I'll just flip it over. I've got it upside down here at the moment. This spring. This spring goes over this post. There's a groove in that post that that spring sits into. And the long tail of that spring needs to come back past that post. Let's see if I can lift it. I've pulled it back over here. Now that's the return spring for our bee lever. I'm going to hold back this latch and move the blade actuating ring forward. If I can get all my fingers and thumbs working at the same time. Got two catches working against me here. Here we go. I've got the blades, the blade actuating blades fully open there, so this is where the B lever would drop in. So there's clearance there for the B lever to drop into place. Here is my B lever. I've got to pull it, there's a notch in the back of the B lever that picks up that spring. So I've got to pick up that spring with a notch in the B lever. Bring the B lever back into position and drop it over the post. So it's just sitting there spring loaded at the moment waiting to get away. The screw that holds the B lever in position has another spring on it. This one. And this spring is bears against the uh, flash sink setting lever and so forth. Now getting this in position is entertaining. And of course I've got to use the special screwdriver because it's a post rather than a screw. 
I'll get that started. That looks like that went very well. I'll check that the bee lever moves freely. It does. I can do that screw up. And I'll zoom you back in. And that much will probably do. The tail of that spring has to be lifted up and over and against the lens tube. So it's over here. And it bears on this lever here. If I hold back the B lever, I can move back my blade actuating ring and the blades are closed. A bit of graphite powder sitting there, we'll blow that away. Okay, so far so good. The flash sink gear, put the pallet in place, the little pallet wheel. There's a sector gear that drives that pallet wheel. And the little catch at the end, little catch at the end there of that lever, catches on another component and it needs to latch and unlatch smoothly. So I'm just putting a touch of molybdenum paste on there. This sits in here. If I hold back this lever and it allows me to drop that in and I'll swing it round and I can get the spring hooked up. Here's the spring. I've got the spring firmly gripped in my pliers. The loop on the end hooks over that post, stretch the spring out and it connects up with that hole, that little hole on that arm. I've cocked that. If I move the blade actuating ring you'll see that that was released. Drove the pallet wheel which rattled against the pallets and gave us the uh, the timing required. Excuse me, I've got pieces getting knocked off the table here by my elbow. Hopefully nothing got away. I might have caught them all in time. All right. I think that I will put in place the flash sink settings lever. The spring here acts against this pin. That pin has to go come up behind that spring. Now to get this in place I want to wipe some molybdenum paste on those ratchet teeth. Doesn't need much. And the detent spring, which hides under here on the case, that acts that, that pin runs against. So I'll get that in. Getting this in position is always entertaining. Where are we? Around here somewhere. Okay. Swing that around. Jamming up on me. And the pin has to come up behind that spring. The spring is catching on it, is it? 
just make sure that spring no, that that appears fine so there that's that's in place this bracket goes on next now this has got a sprung loaded arm on it a catch it has to drop into one of these notches here to press this catch in so it's free to drop into one of those notches and not get trapped sitting on top of it otherwise you end up bending things there are three screws in this case they are countersunk these case these screws are the same as the ones that were used to secure the case and the mechanism plate together they're the same size just check that that moves that's all good there's my assembly check let's pop it back in here next flash stuff just gave that a very brief a quick wipe with molybdenum paste this spring has to be pulled in against the edge of the case inside of the case that's what tensions it swing that arm out and that should drop into position and yeah, moving flash contact if it'll just come up the right way for me that goes in on top of that get that seated correctly that's good if I cock this that brings that over so I can get the next lever in place which is this now this is a bit complicated, there's an extra piece on here it sits like that so it should be sitting like that when you swing it into place fits over that post Here we go. That looks okay. Oops. Retrieve that one. screw started the video camera stopped there I suspect I had a file size limit there's a return spring at the other end of the bracket which fits on here and the screw that goes through there is a shoulder screw and the spring must be free to rotate around that shoulder on the screw not get trapped underneath it otherwise things won't work nicely Check that's not trapped. No, that's good. Tighten that screw. One at the other end. And hook that spring into position. There's a notch in the back of this arm. It needs to be hooked into there.
that's it so now that's sprung loaded and that's the catch that holds the main cam in the cocked position okay so far so good the shutter release lever I'll just give the shaft that tiny white with my leptinum paste we'll get this in position that drops in there it's got to come in under the B lever and the tail of the spring has to be lifted all the way over and around and under there which it's always reluctant to do there it is it's done so under the, the spring of that you can see it lifts the B lever up when it's released all right that's looking good the main drive cam next <clears throat> 